Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Thursday, January the 14th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. These all look to you, to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Our Old Testament reading today is from Ezekiel chapters 36 and 37. Thus says the Lord God, On the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will cause the cities to be inhabited, and the waste places shall be rebuilt. And the land that was desolate shall be tilled instead of being the desolation that it was in the sight of all who passed by. And they will say, This land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations that are left all around you shall know that I am the Lord. I have rebuilt the ruined places and replanted that which was desolate. I am the Lord, I have spoken, and I will do it. Thus says the Lord God, This also I will let the house of Israel ask me to do for them, to increase their people like a flock, like the flock for sacrifices, like the flock at Jerusalem during her appointed feasts. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of people. Then they will know that I am the Lord. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves, and will raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves, and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Our writing this morning is from Ambrose of Milan, from a book of his letters. There is a natural law written on our hearts, as the Apostle Paul teaches us when he writes that, for the most part, the Gentiles, which do not have the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, and though they have not read the law, still have the works of the law written in their hearts. Romans 2, 14-15. Adam broke this law and incurred guilt, and through arrogance fell into transgression. Had he not thus violated his allegiance, but been obedient to the commands of heaven, 
he would have preserved to his posterity the prerogative of nature and the innocence that he possessed at his birth. Therefore, as by Adam's disobedience, the authority of the law of nature was corrupted and blotted out, the written law was found necessary. The written law, then, was published, first to take away all excuse, lest men should say, I did not know sin, because I received no rule what to avoid, and next, that all the world might become guilty before God by the recognition of sin, Romans 3.19. Now the world becomes guilty before God by the law in all that are made liable to its prescripts, but no man is justified by its works. By the law comes the knowledge of sin, but not the remission of guilt. But when the Lord Jesus came, he forgave all men that sin, which none could escape, and blotted out the handwriting against us by the shedding of his own blood. Colossians 2.14 This, then, is the Apostle's meaning. Sin abounded by the law, but grace abounded by Jesus. For after the whole world became guilty, he took away the sin of the whole world, as John bore witness, saying, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1.29 Therefore, let no one glory in works, for by his works no man shall be justified. For he who is just has a free gift, for he is justified by the bath of baptism. It is faith, then, which delivers by the blood of Christ. For blessed is the man to whom sin is remitted, and pardon granted. Psalm 32, 1. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As always, on Thursday, our Thursday prayer focuses on the means of grace. O Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised to your church that the gates of hell would not prevail against her, and you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But ah, O Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled and your blessed sacrifice stands neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your people for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all our arrogance, and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word from before our eyes. O Lord, we pray you, visit this vine which you once established for yourself, and renew us with the sun of your mercy and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood, and let all your faithful people ever be found in the Apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. We implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may ever be a place where the medicine of eternal life, the forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there, so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O eternal High Priest, let the fruit of your Spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another, to the glory of your holy name, here in time, and hereafter in eternity. For you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, died for the ungodly, declaring all of humanity righteous by the shedding of his blood. Grant us the free gift of faith to receive this reality for our salvation that by your grace we may serve you in love and righteousness all the days of our lives. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, 
through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.